Good morning, friends. What time is it? Fellow, fellow magicians, uh, thank you so much for joining today. Mr. David Copperfield is here, and uh, kindly understand we have 10 minutes approximately of time. Kindly understand the situation and let everyone uh, have the chance to speak. Thanks for your cooperation. So give a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Are you all ready? Huh? <laughs> welcome. Big welcome to the first. For a opportunity. That's what we want to play for you. Yeah. <laughs> what, what time is it there, first of all? What time do you have? So we are, uh, we, it's, it's early morning, 8.30 a.m. here. Wow. Well, good morning. 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 Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Very good morning, sir. Very good morning to you, David. Thank you. Good morning to you guys. Uh, good evening, uh, David. Oh my God! It, it actually it looks wow. It feels as if I'm watching on the first row as I as I viewed your show on the first uh, ticket. You know, it, it feels so wow. I'm having goosebumps all over me. <laughs> it's a great, honor. It's a great honor. How how are you today? How was your day? We're very good. I I've been watching a lot of movies tonight. We're gonna watch a four-hour movie. We're gonna watch uh, Gone with the Wind. A very famous uh, movie uh, called Gone with the Wind. It's going to be pretty terrific. Right. Um, many years. You know, I'm inspired very much by movies. So we've been watching incredible classics uh, at home. Been spending time with my family. You know, normally, normally uh, during this time of day, I'm on stage doing shows. Um, so very rarely do I get a chance to have dinner with my family, which I have every night, which is a, a real blessing for me. So uh, you know, I work 42 weeks a year, and during those 42 weeks a year, I'm always at the theater doing shows in Christmas and, and uh, Easter, all those holidays, I'm on stage. So this is a very, very special time for me that I get a chance to actually uh, break bread with my family, and it's uh, really enjoying it. Yeah, in this moment, we would actually, uh, personally, we all are so happy, and thanks to the COVID-19 in a positive way, so that we all can meet and spend time with the family. That's an amazing moment what the virus has taught us all today. It's, uh, we try to make the best of it. It's not easy. That's I'd right. love to be doing shows, um, but uh, we can talk like this and I'm happy to answer your questions and uh, yes. uh, yeah. share, share yeah. things with you. Uh, yeah, during these test times of lockdown during uh, COVID-19, it's a pleasure to be able to speak with you. The entire magic fraternity in India is waiting to meet you and speak to you as we have uh, already thousands of people watching on the social media. It's a great moment for every one of us here in India to see the legend wow. right in front of our eyes. We feel wow. We feel wow. wow. How do you feel? You make me feel very honored. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, the current COVID-19 situation has completely locked down uh, the whole world. But out of necessity, online shows on magic and mentalism is now popping up everywhere. What is your yeah. take on this and how do you uh, see its future in the coming years? I think, you know, we're learning to get along every new environment. We're human beings and we're very resilient. I think as magicians, uh, finding this kind of contact through this way is great. Uh, many friends of mine have been doing magic in hospitals, showing, sharing magic with patients in hospitals uh, over the internet, uh, making people happy. Um, I think there's a lot of new communication happening and I think there's so much that can be done uh, with the internet. You know, having this kind of cooperation, developing magic for that medium is I think very exciting, you know, and I think it's a good opportunity. We're slowly learning how to do it and I think to use every opportunity to expand on it and do great things is, is really great. You know, having um, magic, you know, I did lots of magic on specials using the frame of a TV set, you know what I'm saying? We did things where you touch the screen and move your fingers around. Now, every phone, you touch the screen, you swipe and you expand. But at this time, touching the screen, nothing happened to the screen. The magic was part of the, the illusion that we would do. So it's kind of interesting to see the opportunity this pre presents to us, I think. That's amazing, that's brilliant. Now, we move, we move on to the questions like, you know, uh, there are senior magicians and uh, 
well-known, renowned magicians across uh, India. So we'd like to say a hi and ask a couple of questions to you so that it makes the conversation more interesting. Uh, uh, first, we would uh, uh, go on with the, uh, the illusionist and the founder of Magic Planet and a motivational speaker, uh, Mr. Gopinath Mudgad is there. And uh, we all over here, have, uh, you are the idol, you are the role model. And we have been inspired with so much of your videos. And if you scratch our blood, it says David Copperfield. By uh, you know, by <laughs> that's so we are. So thank over, you. Over to Mr. Mutikar. So thank you. Mr. Uh, so nice uh, to meet you through Zoom, and uh, very happy here. So I have thank only you. one one question that uh, we are training hundred differently abled children magic with the support of the government of Kerala and it's a different art center. I have one question. I know you are a distinguished person who is conducting the project magic. So all the children are at home now. So how can we go ahead? How can we teach them if they are at home? How can we go ahead? That's my question. It's an interesting challenge, you know. Uh, the project magic website has many pieces of magic to do, you know, simple pieces of magic that I think can be shared. Um, the dollar bill with the uh, paper clips, the jumping rubber bands, all those things. I think, you know, just instead of having it from the book, having it with video. Okay. Um, and there's good teaching techniques on the website of Project Magic to show how to do it. If you ever do this and you try it, I'd be interested to know the success over the Zoom or over the, uh, uh, or FaceTime. You have FaceTime, of course? Yeah. The iPhone. yeah. Or uh, what's it? What's WhatsApp? I think you know, with a child or an adult uh, and a medical professional there. If there's a medical professional there, it would be the patient with the kid or the adult to have them slowly do it, and you can correct them on how to make it happen. Uh, yeah. It would be kind of fun to see. Uh, I mean, this becomes a mirror, doesn't it? You know, this is also a great uh, a mirror to actually practice magic and see yourself in it. You know, it's All right. like okay. now as a child. And when you were a child, you're about my age, I think, maybe a little younger. You look younger. Yeah. Um, when, I, when I was a child, we, we didn't have, we had video cameras a little bit, but really the time of the mirror was a very special time to be able to practice and, and do that. And I'd have mirrors on all sides to see what my angles were. But I think now we have this, which is a great thing to see what you're doing and to test and watch them do it. So it's a great, I think it's a great time actually for Project Magic to do magic in a social distance yep. uh, yeah. <laughs> with a child or with a medical professional there. And if you do this, I'd love for you to send uh, me videos if it works and what you learn or what sure. you learn. That's sure, great. sure, sure. Sure, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's so nice of you. That's so thank nice. you very much. That's a brilliant question. The next question is from Mr. Samraj. Uh, he's a horror magician. Uh, he has a question to ask it to you. Uh, over to you, Mr. Samraj. Hi, David. I'm Magician uh, Samraj. For it, you may remember me twice we met at uh, your MGM hotel. I do remember. Anyway, my yes. question is, my question is, see, after the mask magician, all right, many over smart people, you can say magicians, are revealing the secrets of our precious magic items. Okay? And uh, just, um, I'm asking you, will it affect your program or uh, how it is affect uh, the world renowned magician, David Copperfield? Sure. Well, I, you know, the mass magician idea was, even 20 years ago, was a problem for us. Even before the mass magician, there was a book by William Poundstone uh, and a few different people wrote exposure books. You know, I'm not a fan of exposure. I think, you know, I'm in the business of creating wonder and the, the mystery is very, very important to me. Watching people really respond with wonder is a very important part of my kind of magic. Um, it's bad, it sucks. It's not fun to have stuff being exposed. <laughs> I think though that there's so much clutter in the world. Clutter, you understand? So much stuff to go around that people really don't, don't seem to pay attention to those details of how things work. I think um, I'm able to do things today that were exposed five years ago on television or on the internet. You know, if you can go on the internet and you punch in stuff, you can get kind of good guesses on how things work. 
Um, so I don't think it's a, as big a problem as like, oh my, our careers are over with, we're gonna change everything because of exposure. Because people I still think will be um, amazed and still be curious about things. I would test the things that are exposed. I would try that and see if they remember the explanation. Because I don't think it's a big, as big a problem as we think. My motivation, if you saw my show at the MGM, is to move things forward. I try to ignore the fact that I've, things have been stolen from me or things that uh, are copied. That's not so good either, besides exposures. People doing my work, I've learned, I get hurt, oh, it's painful, but then I, I'm motivated to do more things, create new things, you know? So we have spaceships and dinosaurs and, uh, and aliens and different things that are, 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 you know, trying to move it forward. So I think I would encourage you to maybe test what's been exposed and find that maybe it isn't so bad. People can still uh, achieve wonder because they don't, people are so involved in so many things in life, they don't focus on remembering the methodology on things. So maybe it still is okay to do those things that were exposed. I think maybe it is. But also what I do is I move forward, learn new things and try to uh, be challenged by creating new things. That's my answer. That, uh, that's a thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> that's a great motivation uh, 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 from you, uh, David. Seriously, you know, because most of the time we go, uh, I don't know what to say. M many illusionists go on a scoop, like you know, because they all feel bad about it. Okay, now we go to the next question by the child prodigy of Indian magic, who was um, nurtured by Doug Hennings, uh, Junior Shankar. Over to you. Hi, David. Oh. I'm joining here with my father, Professor Shankar. And uh, it's an honor, first of all, it's an honor to be with you because I think the last time we saw each other was when I was like that, if you would remember that. So it was an can honor. Can you, one, can you show me the picture one more time? Uh, uh, it'll be sure. You can, you can yeah. see oh, my look, desktop, look, yeah? Look at that. Look, look at you that. Can see that? Where was that? That was FISM 91, David. Wow. Isn't that Switzerland, great? Holland, uh, 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 Lausanne. And I couldn't afford shoes. Look at that. I couldn't afford <laughs> shoes. <laughs> I'm just missing your view here. I'm just coming back. Uh, if I'm just making sure, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a beautiful memory. It is we a wonderful this. memory. As I said, uh, it was like an honor. I still am getting goosebumps when I think about it. Yes, over to the question, Shankar. Yes, please. thank you. So the question has been partly answered by you in the first uh, part of this session, but I will just uh, extend it, saying that like, uh, in these difficult times when uh, magicians from all genre, from close up to stage, uh, stand up magic, are doing uh, online shows. I'm talking about shows, online shows, and uh, they're able to do that. But uh, when most of us uh, illusionists uh, are unable to go, actually go on stage and perform, uh, what would you suggest uh, we do to keep our magic running uh, in the minds of the people? Yes, well, I I think it's a great challenge. I think, you know, it's an amazing challenge. I think you should do illusions like this. I think you should figure out how in your living room to light a little area and actually do some of the big stuff in an environment you can create, in your garage. You say, do some lighting, make it look really awesome. You know, um, I searched in my house for a cool spot. I found this spot. This is a nice, I've never shot anything here. You know, I've got a big movie light here and I've got a, a Robert Houdin poster, I'm sorry, a George Melies poster up there, an amazing Melies poster. And I discovered a, a new place to, to do a, a video call. If I was doing an illusion, I would find a place to do the illusion. If that was my strength, I would use that strength in an environment that's creative. Find a, a garage, your place, to actually do uh, your illusions via this medium. And uh, that's what you should do. Good challenge. That's a challenge. Thank you, David. Thank you. That's, that's a real challenge to practice and uh, get it onto the stage. Uh, thanks, David, for that uh, wonderful answer. Like, uh, uh, we have another magician who is a, uh, who's a great artist in the field of Indian magic. Uh, he's a celebrities magician and he's a movie star too. Uh, Mr. K.S. Ramesh, over to you. <clears throat> Good evening, uh, Mr. Copperfield. Thank you very much. Good to talk to you. Uh, good evening. You know, uh, apart from, uh, I, I would go on the lighter side, uh, being a filmmaker, or an actor, uh, a magician. You know, we have been uh, saluting you for decades. 
all the hundreds of magicians in India, amateurs, professionals, and uh, the millions of your fans in India. Thank you. As the Badsha of world magic. Badsha means uh, the emperor in India. Badsha. The king, the emperor. <laughs> the king, the emperor. Thank and, you so much. Uh, but we believe, and uh, I think uh, you also know, magic was born in India thousands of years ago. So your journey as a, a magician, I think, will be um, complete only if you visit India and be our guest, <laughs> uh, with or without your shows. So right away, could you promise some date in the future or some time where you would uh, uh, come and be <laughs> my guest in India? Uh, well, thank you. I would love to. I'm not sure getting my show there would be more yeah. difficult. Really? But I think uh, as, a, uh, as a person who would love to see your culture and your people and your magic, I, would, I think I have to in my lifetime uh, go to, to visit you. You know, I, uh, I would really, really love to. Would you, uh, uh, I, would you put together some shows for me to see if I come there? Sure, sure, sure. Definitely. Uh, please do. Uh, That's what we're yeah. talking about, David. Uh, that's the whole idea of the uh, thing, you know. Uh, you remember, I hope you remember, I asked you uh, 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 once about you coming to India, but you know, you are, your schedules are so busy, uh, we understand it completely. I mean, the show is, is a challenge because it's so many people and so many things and logistically hard. But as far as me becoming an audience for you and seeing the beautiful beautifulness of your country, you know, you know so you can say beautifulness. Anyway, the, the beauty of your country I think, uh, you know, I would really, uh, I have to do that, certainly. We would be really honored at that moment of time, David. Definitely, we're expecting and anticipating that day for uh, you to be here in India. Uh, that's going to be great uh, stuff. Uh, uh, we have another, uh, 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 the mentalist, uh, uh, Mr. Nakul Shanoi over here, uh, where he would like to ask you a very precious question. Hi, David. Nice to see you again. Thanks Where are you? Good. Yeah. Uh, David, uh, you have thousands of magic artifacts uh, going all the way over history. And uh, which among them is your most priceless possession? You know, it's, it's, it's funny. There's lots of things in that museum. I mean, it's just, you know, everything from Houdini's water torture cell to uh, the milk can escape, uh, Blackstone things, Keller's things. Thurston's things, uh, amazing artifacts. And, and you, we have uh, f filmmakers here also. You know, Georges Méliès, things that belong to Georges Méliès, who was a magician, but also like you, a, a magician and a filmmaker. I have his things. But I think the one thing that made me very emotional was uh, 20 years ago, I went to France and Christian Feschner, uh, who was a terrific filmmaker, not with us anymore, and a great magic inventor. He was my friend, and George Proust, who's still around in France. Uh, they, they handed me the gimmick to the ethereal levitation. Um, Robert Houdin's, you know it is the broom suspension. It is yeah. the, the gimmick to that. The, the, I don't want to say it, just in case laymen are watching this, I don't want to say the gimmick out loud, but yeah. the, the gimmick to the broom levitation that made his son float with ether in the air, the smell of ether, because that was the big thing at that time. That gimmick was in my hand and I, I dreamt of having it. And after 20 years later, it's now in my museum, which is a really amazing thing. And I think it's one of the beginnings of illusion magic, uh, you know, having that prop. Uh, it started people thinking about bigger illusions uh, that was, uh, you know, and of course, Robert Houdin uh, used it in his show. It was very popular, copied by many people. And we're still using it today this kind of principle. But that's the first one that was ever made and that really brought a tear to my eye when I, when I held it and also when I possess it now in my museum. So that's a pretty big deal. Thank you so much for this, David. Thank, Thank you. you so much, uh, Nakul, for asking that. And uh, I, I, I think, is uh, Jadugur Anand here? I don't think uh, he's there uh, on the screen. Uh, but anyhow, his question was, apart from Las Vegas and Thailand, uh, how long can we expect of a performing arts industry internationally uh, to normalize after this deadly COVID-19 attack, uh, your assumption of that? I wish I had the answer. That would be, I could do very, the world, uh, help the world. I had the answer to that. You know, we just need 
a vaccine. You know, we need a vaccine or we need really good testing for everyone. Uh, if we have good testing, maybe feel, people feel safer to normalize. They're trying, in America, they're really pushing to normalize things and to reopen things. But unfortunately, the fear is it's gonna start all over again. You know, they, they, they talk about a curve happening. Now the curve is flattening a little bit. There's not as many cases here because people are staying inside. Many are not, but many are, most are. And, um, you know, they're flattening the curve, but without a vaccine and without really good testing, it's going to be hard not to have it happen again. So I'm just praying that uh, a lot of people who are smarter than me are working very hard, and, and they are. Uh, many companies and many uh, people are really trying to find the thing that would be a safe thing to solve this. So uh, we just have to say a prayer and hope for the best. Yeah, that's, that's the only option what we have at this moment, uh, David. That's your well said. Uh, we have one one more question from the uh, controller, uh, co-host of the show, Mr. Uh, Balu. Uh, you want to have a question? You can, please. Yeah. Uh, uh, good evening, David. This is a wonderful lifetime opportunity for us. My question is, uh, uh, it will help uh, all the beginners and all the magicians. What is the best advice you got in your magic career and from whom, if you can mention? Yeah. What happened with me is that, you know, I was told no a lot. <laughs> My mother told me no. My mother said, you're not going to make it. It's not going to happen. Uh, my father was more encouraging. My mother said no. Uh, a certain few people said, yes, you should do this. But, you know, there was a lot of caution, a lot of fear uh, in my childhood that, that I couldn't do this. And it made me work harder. It made me fight harder. It made me stay up later and work more hours and find a way to make, make the magic resonate or say something, uh, make the magic more original and, uh, and, uh, and personal, uh, things that would communicate uh, in, in, a, in a special way. So I think all that negative stuff really in my childhood, self-doubt really worked for me. Um, the advice I can give is the best advice, is the more shows you can do, the better. The more performances you can do, and the more you can listen to the audience, um, the better you become. The audience really, knows more than you do. The audience knows what's funny, knows what's not funny. I'll create something and I think it's great. And I'll find out certain portions of it are very good, but other things need work. And the only way to find, to find that out is if I do lots of shows, lots of things. And uh, I, I dare to be bad. I really try to do, and it continues today. If some of you have seen my show, you'll see things that were really, really not good three years ago and finally became good because the audience, uh, told me, guided me on what to do, because I listened to them very carefully. So I think, you know, for me, any young magician or even an old magician, I'm an old magician now, I continue to do lots of shows and learn a lot from each show. And, um, you know, it's, it's uh, I call it glorious torture. You know, it's torture to be, you know, to, 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 to not get the reaction you want or not have things work perfectly. I learned from that thing and it makes it glorious because it finally ends up working out good if you stick to it. And to this day, I still learn from every show. Uh, today, I'm still motivated to do things that I haven't done before. And to this day, I'm really so proud to be in the world that we love, this magic world that we love. I'm really proud to be part of it. Wow, that's, uh, that's brilliant, uh, David. You know, uh, honestly speaking, when I, saw the, uh, when I saw your show for the first time, uh, the energy what you had has taught me a lesson of, you know, there's nothing called aging. And you always are aging in glamour. <laughs> that's beautiful. That's brilliant. I saw your show five times and, and that's every single time. It's the same David Copperfield on stage. That's a, a brilliant uh, thing. You know, hats off to you, David. And uh, uh, thanks for your wonderful time. We have lots of people. I, uh, I don't know how to, uh, if you, do, would you like to proceed further? Because it's all on your uh, or if you want to, I can uh, close let's, the show. Let's do, four, let's do four more questions. Four more. That's great. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Uh, well, Mr. Vaivet Pillai is here. Mr. Arun Kumar Dutt is here. Gopal Ji is here. Sh uh, Super Selvam is here. And uh, Anshul is here. And many more magicians are here. Yona is here. That's, um, so, does uh, anyone want to uh, uh, put a question forward? Mr. Dutt. Uh, to give a brief narration of Mr. Dutt, Dutt was my body load teacher. Hello. Nice to meet you. Uh, hello, Mr. David. My question is, when and how did you, when and how did David Seth Kotkin transform into David Copperfield? 
you know, it was really because of a passion for all entertainment forms. You know, my passion, I was good at magic, but I loved movies. I loved movies and I loved Broadway and I loved Frank Sinatra and Gene Kelly and Fred Astaire. I loved all of that. And I said, how am I going to combine what I love with what I'm good at? Magic came very easy to me for some reason, but I wanted to, to really move an audience. And it really, the transition came to the fact that I just wanted to, to say something with the magic. It wasn't just about fooling people. I wanted to speak with it, just like a songwriter. You know, when Frank Sinatra sang a song, he talked about his life. You know? And magic, no one talked about their life. And I wanted to use magic to talk about my life a lot, you know, to change the audience's emotions with magic. And that's what really changed things for me. You know, I really, uh, my admiration for more, that's what did it for me. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sir, for asking that wonderful question. Um, uh, at this moment, I would like to state uh, something to uh, the, my fellow magicians and people who are watching the social media. Please make a decision uh, to visit Vegas and definitely you have to uh, see Copperfield show once in a lifetime because you should see the, the dinosaurs and the UFOs and how's the alien friend, you know, the <laughs> alien one. He's been social distancing. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> up in the air. Up in the air. That's great. Uh, my Twitter. Do you have my phone? I need a phone. Bethany. Bethany. One second before you do. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh, God. That's okay. <laughs> Can you see okay? Is it too much of a glare? Yeah, we can see it. Yeah, yeah. We can see him. He's the cutest. He's so cute on the show. And the way things happen on the show, oh my God, it's it's uh, it's brilliant. It's it's uh, you. Everyone should watch the show. Yes, yeah. Over to you, Anshul. What would you like to ask? Hello, where are you? Anshul is here. Uh, Anshul, uh, make it. How are you? I'm beautiful so lady. Good, sir. You? Yeah, the, she's a beautiful. Lady. First of all, thank you so much, Basan sir, for uh, giving us such a wonderful golden opportunity. My question is to you, sir. Uh, you perform 42 weeks throughout the year from so many years. So don't you get tired or somewhat uh, when you don't, uh, don't you want something a single day that no, today I don't want to perform, I want to relax. How do you manage, how do you get such a great energy in you from the continued energy? You know, so I'm a human being. Guess what? I'm a human being. Uh, there's days where I'm tired, right? There's days yes. where I'm, you know, I get a little stomach ache, you know, some days that are like that. But, you know, the audience is there, you know, they are there. And it's amazing when you walk on stage, you kind of realize your responsibility. And people look at you, you know, you're all magicians, right? Why? Why do you do what you do? I mean, what is it about what we do? What we give is we get that reaction that the face of, of wonder, right? That's an amazing gift that we're given back. The audience gives us something great back, don't they? When they react, to, when we do something good, they react, it's an amazing gift. I feel really needed by the audience. I feel responsible because they're there needing to escape. The audience needs to get away. We all have so many problems in the world. Look what we're going through now. So many problems. When this doesn't exist, people have individual issues, right? <coughs> Why do they like magic? They like magic because we we make them get away from it. We occupy their, occupy their, their mind uh, and make them escape from those things. It's a really great gift that we give them and they give back to us this great gift of making us realize what we're doing something very, very special, right? So, you know, on those days where, you know, I'm a human being and I'm, you know, I've got problems in my life or business problems or things aren't going well or the weather's not good. Yeah, it's not that easy, but then you walk on stage and you look at them and they really, they really need, they need us to do our job properly, right? And that's what makes it better, makes it work. Well said, that's the whole energy. You should watch the show until, you know, every second, every minute on stage, every show, David is phenomenal with his energy levels. And thanks, David, for reminding us that you are human. We, we were thinking yeah. you are God. <laughs> <laughs> Very <laughs> interesting. The last question uh, from Mr. Kudrali Ganesh. Um, he's a classical Indian magician. Kudrali, over to you. 
Your shirt looks like my eyelids. Just you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm Kudroli Ganesh. I, I just first want to, before my question, I just want to uh, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for uh, uh, for inspiring a uh, uh, magician like me, uh, many magicians like me. I want to ask one question. How much storytelling is very important when you present the illusion on the stage? Very good question. You know, the, the issue is this. It's a real learning to balance those things, you know? I was criticized very much in the past for having too much dance and not enough magic, or too much story and not enough magic. And you fight and you finally get the balance so it's correct, you know? Uh, and it's not easy, it's not easy, because the quest was to really, uh, for me to have those other stories and the emotions and so forth, but sometimes it's too much, so you have to pull back. I saw um, a documentary on a, a TV show, are you familiar with the show, Broadway show Fiddler on the Roof. You know the show? Fiddler on the Roof? Yes. It's yes. a very famous show. It's done all over the world. And, um, and there's, a, there's a whole documentary about it. And on the documentary, they talk about the process of getting it to Broadway and how they cut songs and cut routines. And very at the last minute, it was getting bad reviews, this show, and it was in Detroit. And there was a song in there that the director loved and the writers loved, but all the people said, it's not quite right. It's not the right spirit of this thing. And they, with great hardship, they took that song out because it didn't fit the show. And then suddenly the show worked finally. And then it started getting good reviews, even though people were so, felt so strongly about that one, that one piece. Um, so even today, you know, I learned from that documentary that I'm, I'm not wrong in this. I, you know, I, I fight for things to be in the show, but if some of this, they're, they're not right. And you have to learn that balance of story versus magic or dance versus magic. And even the people that I admired, all the this guy named Jerome Robbins, uh, who was a great director, was a very tough director. He made those mistakes and had to learn that even at the top of his career. So we're always learning and, uh, and uh, that's what I continue to learn. Wow, that, uh, that's uh, so interesting, uh, David. Uh, uh, this can go on and on, David. Talking to you is like, you know, again, uh, every word you say is again storytelling to us. You know, we can keep listening for the years ahead. Very <laughs> uh, finally, one, one uh, uh, question, and we are ending the show there. It's from uh, Mr. Vadivel Pillai. Are you willing to take it, uh, Mr. David? Yeah. 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 Uh, first and foremost, David, you have inspired so many of us. And um, all I can tell you from my side is from all the magicians in India. We pray that you're safe and everybody in your family is safe. And after the lockdown, I want you to show your amazing immortal magic to the next and next and next generations for them to enjoy. Take great Thank care you. of yourself. Thank you very much. I'm very moved by that. Thank you. And that's the perfect question. <laughs> yeah. That's the perfect ending for this whole thing. Thank you so much, David, for your valuable time. We all pray for you and your family. Definitely, thanks for what you will play for mentioning that. You're a very nice person and a very good uh, mentalist and a shadow player, shadow grapher. Uh, so that's the way it is. So, David, on behalf of all of us, uh, I would express my gratitude and a big thank you. Uh, uh, big thank you, uh, we both you <laughs> for spending your wonderful time with us this moment will go down in the history of Indian magic. Uh, because you. we all have been awaiting and thirsty and greedy to see you. Uh, that's the uh, uh, raw word what I can use at this moment. I'm so moved and so emotional. Uh, thanks, David, for considering uh, the, uh, the mail and the phone call and uh, whatever happened. It's so nice. Thanks for considering that. Uh, we would love to have you here someday to watch you perform live for the millions of your fans or at least put your step once to India so that uh, we all get blessed. That's what I would like to say on this moment. You are a role model. You are a role model for all of us and so many. And uh, at this moment, uh, thank you, Bethany, for coordinating the whole thing. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you, Balu, from my side. Thank you so much. And thank you so much again. Uh, hope to see you soon in Vegas as well as in India, uh, David. Have a great night. Nice talking to you. Um, would you like to say something else, David? We love you. I, I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful, so grateful to be part of this. Thank you so much yeah. for, your, for, for making this happen. I love you all and uh, we, will, we will see you soon.
Thank you, thank you very much, Vasan. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We'll be in touch. Take care. Thank you so much. Good day to all. Good day to all. Thank you so much. Thank you.